Good evening, everyone. The show is 22 now. The network is Area 22 Productions, and I am Mark Mendoza. Tonight, as I say sometimes, good evening, everyone. To the show that I invited on is 22 now. The network is Area 22 Productions, and I am. However, um, I call my good friend Billy Mira here. And uh, he came through, and uh, it is great to have him on with us tonight, Billy. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, really. I appreciate the last minute thing. And yeah. um, Billy and I have a lot of history. We dated many years ago. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> actually, yeah, I was a battered actually, wife. Actually, yeah, you, were, you still are a battered <laughs> wife. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> actually, uh, go back to the beginning. I believe. Well, first of all, I was a fan of yours on the Howard Stern show. Right. 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 Um, and uh, you, you, as I was a fan of yours. Right. But uh, you were the impressionist on the Howard Stern show, and right. uh, also a character too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, the. You know, Impressions were unbelievable and plenty of them. Yes. And um, yeah. as I don't know if everybody here has experienced that, but you were not in, not only incredible at impressions, but you came in and out of them constantly. And there was a lot of people in a room with you, and you were just there yeah, with the, the which, guys on the show. Which is like my favorite way to do impressions yeah, is actually fast. in conversation. Right. So if like I think it's appropriate, I like to just you pull, pull us, it out, pull someone out, insert it in, and pull. You know, that's why it's great when you're in conversation to just use an impression to explain a story or talk, and it always uh, makes everything entertaining. So I I believe it was like 2004 when we met, and you were with Sal, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the first time that we met. You had come to a show of mine. Right. And um, I remember a, a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, had introduced us. And I was right. like, oh, my God, where's, where's Mark? I heard you're going to be here at Mark. And that's, right. that was the first time we met. It was right that. after one of the shows. And, uh, yeah, we've been friends ever since. The um, I've been a battered wife. Where where where, <laughs> where where was that show? I don't remember. It, I think it was in like like Franklin Square, Franklin Square. or something like that. It was a stand up show. Yeah, right? it was like a right. it was like you a bar. Yeah, it was and like a, a stand up show. And it was a, it was a very funny night. It really was. It was a, it was a it very was, good night. It was. It was um, a great night. And that was before. That was like actually the the beginning of my time on the Stern show it was just starting, starting to heat up. Yes. And it was before Sal Governale was a real big personality. He was there full time. You know, he was kind of just a personality who would come on the show. So it was really like the infancy. It was like the, the beginning stages. And uh, we were doing a lot. Of, in those days, we were doing a lot of comedy together and uh, growing as comedians. We would go back and forth into the city. We would do the Stern show. We would do, all, you know, it was just, it was a great time in our, in our careers. Yeah, you also, it, correct me if I'm wrong, at the time, you also did a whole bunch of work with Jim Brewer. That was later. Was it a little bit that later? That was later. Yeah, a yeah, lot later. I remember later. the chronological like order of everything. But um, I remember seeing you on a couple of shows in the city with Jim Brewer, right? Yeah, like years later I would do stuff. with, But like after 2006, when we got, when Howard moved to Sirius, that right. opened up a lot of opportunity naturally because he went from K-Rock and then over to Sirius. Over to Sirius. And right. there were a lot of personalities, you of know, course. that were there working in Sirius, which would, made right. it a real interesting time. So you would run into different people. And I remember one of the people that... That I had a, a mutual friend, which was uh, Chris Chikino, was a great guitar right, player. Great guitar player. Who went on to play in Rock of Ages and all these, you know, big musical productions. And uh, at the time, he he was very close because he had worked with Brewer. And he said, "You got to meet this guy, Billy Mira, who does all these metal, these heavy metal impressions on right. the, uh, the Howard Stern show." And uh, I remember we met in the hallway, and we just instantly clicked. And he was like, "You know, you got to come on my show, man." Did you, gotta, Brewer? Yeah, Brewer. Was <laughs> That you sounds like, come it. On my show, like man. <laughs> and then uh, I was like, yeah, you know, it was like ever since then I was on the show like every day. Yeah. So I was split up now, you know, between how, working with Howard Stern, working with Brewer. And it really opened up so many doors for me at that time. It was like we went into, everything went into overdrive. Yeah, we years. went into, uh, I remember me and the guys would go into Manhattan constantly see your shows. Yeah. And, uh, and the side stuff you did with Jim Brewer was, yeah, uh, yeah. was very funny. Yeah, we did a lot skits. of theaters. And, and, yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of theaters, a lot of great skits, a lot of funny stuff. <laughs> Stuff. In those days, um, it was great. You 
talked about the guitar player again. What was his name? Chris Chikino. Right, Chris Chikino. And Chichino. if he's watching, Chris, I yeah. miss you. I always, he, I wish Chris, he was on. Chris, he misses you, but that's not what he says <laughs> off camera. You got to save me from this guy right here. <laughs> you have another incredible guitar player friend. Well, you have a number of them, but yeah. um, uh, a guy who just put an album out is back on the road, I believe, Jakey Lee. Yes, yes, he um, did. You, he uh, just, yeah. you guys talk often. Yeah, I mean, uh, we text often. We don't right. talk as much as we used to. Right. But uh, but we're still close friends. And we see Jake, and you know, we're still like you and I are. Yeah. You know, uh, you know I, I always say you're, you're, there's certain people that you'll meet in the industry, and they're kind of like fly-by-night friends. And then there's like friends like you and I, like, you know, where we, it doesn't friends. matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you like me. Well, I, I kind of consider us romantically involved friends if, you know, whatever. Well, you are a battered wife. So, yeah. So, anyway, but Jake is like one of those guys. Like, if I didn't see him for months, you right. know, we would get together and just start laughing. And, you know, well, we had he, a great time together. He just Jake. put out a new album. A new album. A new I got to tell you. It's incredible. It's a great album. And it looks like, I mean, although he was always an amazing guitar player, I saw one of his videos a couple of days ago. Amazing. Yeah. He, I, I couldn't tell you the name of the song. I never, I never got it, but I saw this, one of the videos. This album. What a great rock guitar player. Yeah, he's a, he really and, is. And I don't know Jake at all. I mean, I, I don't. Oh, great guy. No, great I've guy. heard a lot he, about him. You, you'd love him. I mean, yeah. if you guys ever hung out, he's, just, we, he's we one of us. He's a, he's a when cool he comes dude. A, when he comes around, we'll get him back on the show with you. Yeah, I think he's actually coming to Long he Island. Is. He is, actually. It's pretty soon, so Sometime I'll give him a text. Spring, if you should come with me, we'll go. Yeah. We'll go see him and hang we'll go, out. And we'll go see Jake. But uh, yeah, his his new album Patina was actually mixed by Max Norman. I think he right. worked on the farm um, with uh, Anthony uh, Esposito, right? And I think they produced it out there, and it was mixed by Max Norman, who did uh, the, all the classic Ozzy, Ozzy albums, stuff, which right. is kind of ironic because uh, uh, Jake's first album, which was um, which was done in two thousand whatever it was, I think they started recording in. 2012, 2013, which was done by this guy Kevin Cherko, and that was right. the first. But it was like all different singers. That's different when I singers, was playing. Yeah. yeah, we were like jamming together at the time. It was like a, a little bit of a hodgepodge. But now it seems like he's really reeled the whole project in, and he's changed a few members, and I'm really happy for him. I, from what I've heard so far, you know, he called me like I don't know, it was a couple months ago. He wanted me to be one of the one of the videos for the. I just I couldn't make it. You know, one of those <laughs> things I couldn't make. I'm like Jake, come on, it's like four hours away. Yeah, you know, of come on. But um, but it was great. Everything I've heard so far from the album has been killer, and it's been you know one release after the next of really strong material. So I got to give a shout out to Jake, Amy, and everybody over in that camp. You know, we congratulations and Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> that's, that's uh, hopefully, uh, Jakey's watching. If he is, if he is, I miss you. I miss my Jake. You leave me. I don't know if he's happy with that. I don't that. know if I could play Bark at the Moon anymore with you, though. <laughs> I don't know if he's happy with that one. Yeah, and I th you know what? And he made a great decision. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? Jake has a lot of nice things to say about Ozzy. Right, always, right. always did. Um, well, was, but, you know, well, you know he made a great... The fame was playing with Ozzy. Yeah, well, exactly. But Badlands, he did a lot. I mean, he really made a name for himself playing with Badlands also. And that album was, you know, that wow. came out in 89 ba was great. Badlands one of the best all time that whole, that whole band that whole everything yeah, they yeah, did yeah. some of the best stuff ever yeah yeah no, without a doubt some it of the best great. stuff ever yeah yeah Jake Lee also we have another well guitar player friend of us in common you know uh, guitar players seem to be the people that are attracted to you I'm a bass player so I can't stand <laughs> so you, you can't st exactly. exactly I have a big problem with bass players as we know <laughs> <laughs> but the um uh, JJ French, my yeah. bandmate from Twisted Sister. Yes, yes, another dear friend. Yeah, great friend. Of course, close with me too. Yeah, uh, not a battered wife <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, JJ French from uh, Twisted Sister, my bandmate and very, very, very close friend. Um, you're also good friends with uh, yeah. JJ French. Yeah. Uh, JJ's a great guy. Yeah. I could sit and talk to Jay. He's like another guy that, you know, we could just put up a microphone and just talk. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I thought of that for something else in the future to get him on with you and me. <sighs> and we'll probably need about a, a six hour show for yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, you because know, people will Well first of all, let's be honest. Whenever you're in a room with JJ French, the right. only guy who's talking is JJ French. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it doesn't matter who is in the room with JJ. JJ can talk. Man. Hey, well, all right. I got to give him a lot of credit. Yeah. As great as D. Schneider is on stage and he can talk and hold an audience, so can JJ. Right. Oh, without a doubt. You know, there's they no were, two ways about it. You know, they were definitely. Well, I mean, uh, he's, he's a you know motivational speaker. Yes. JJ French. So, um, you know, I, and he does an amazing job at it. Yeah. Really incredible. He has his his whole shtick down incredibly well and uh, talks to a lot of important people in the business world. He does, and I told you know yeah. JJ for the longest time. He's always like you know I, I said you should try comedy. Just try five minutes of comedy. Five minutes because he always says, you know, I'd like to try it. I'd like to try it. I just, I don't know if you I'd be good could, at it. I'm you like, you, if you could you, sit up on stage you and think talk he could do for it? an hour, yeah, I think he could do it. It's really? just a matter of rem he's got a good memory. Oh. And, and JJ, so yeah, that's really the really first battle in comedy because you could write jokes. Doesn't make, mean your jokes are going to be good. That's the other key about comedy. You have to be up on stage constantly doing it to work out all those lines. Yeah, but uh, I definitely think that JJ French would be able yeah, to. Yeah, you should follow those rules about your stand up. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, I mean, everybody's wondering. I mean, this guy's saying nothing nice to Billy, but we actually really are good friends, and uh, I do support everything that he does, and I have in the past. Yeah, and I great. try to show up at his gigs, and um, I'm very recent, not too long ago, I showed up at uh, for Billy Mirror and the Hitmen at uh, uh, Smoking Owls in Massapequa. Uh, very. Then listen, Mark. Don't let Mark kid you. He didn't show up for me. He showed up for Smoking Owls. Oh, without a doubt, you just happen to be there. I just happen to be there. Best then. barbecue and going. Best without a doubt. Oh, yes. I don't plug for free, but I got to say, and I know Al too. Yeah. He's a great guy. No, great. But, um, and he rarely has a live music there. Yeah, yeah, no, really? it was, it was so. an honor to do that, and I think it was a pleasant surprise for everybody that was involved. Yeah. We had uh, WHLI that was there. Sure, of course. The wise man, who had me on recently, too. Mm -hmm. We volleyed, and we had a great time. And it was just, uh, it was an amazing event, and everybody, I think it was like, there was like a, an anniversary, 75th anniversary or something going on, <laughs> and it was it was awesome. I, it was I, you know, what, what um, talking about Billy Mayer and the Hitmen, because I haven't seen everything you've done recently, because our schedules are crazy, but um, that band... Um, and also the kind of, um, if you want to call it, wound down show of that, because you can't fit that everywhere. Yeah, you know. Because it's a large <sighs> band. But let me just go on for a minute here. Um, the first time I saw Billy Mirror and the Hitmen was at Smoke and Owls. And I have to say, although I rarely say something nice about you, but I have to say that you were great. The, the band was great. But the whole thing, the important point, and I make this point talking to a lot of people, it was entertaining. Very the important. fact that the band was that good, and it was mostly swing type music, or which uh, I've kind of, you know, kind of changed. Not changed I would it say around. Evolved, evolved since then. Evolved. The, the band was phenomenal, phenomenal, and you had the the Kanata brothers in there. Kanata brothers, yeah. Right. And you had Jordan, uh, Jordan, Jordan and, and, and Jared, and Jared who are cream of the crop musicians, yeah. but everybody else in the band was amazing also. Yeah, no, it was great. And, it was uh, great. But me walking in still, and I know you, and I wasn't exactly sure what you're getting, but the entertainment value, not only was the band amazing, but you mixed it up with the audience. Well, the thing that Mark is, is referring to, right, yeah. I mixed it up with well, the audience. I was going to get to what it was, yeah, but yeah. Go ahead. Don't touch well, me, man. <laughs> Hey, bad so, advice, man. so what, what Mark is forgetting is like the first time that when we first started the project is actually, do you want to talk about Baptized by Fire is going out in front of the Twisted Sister crowd yes. in 2015. Yeah, get it. And, and yes, you Oof. actually did. You opened and up we, for Twisted Sister at uh, Starland Ballroom. <laughs> Starland Ballroom. Right. And I, we were always show up. We were going to get killed. No, man. What was our happen. audience was polite to you guys. But they were great to us. Actually, yeah. they came along for the ride, which I was kind of, oh my God. You know, here I am walking out in this suit, you right. know. You, you, you guys Here I am, Mr. Suits. Vegas. Kind of looking like and the, they the loved time it. period, right? Yeah, like the yeah. yeah. Right? When I first, the funny thing is that when I first came out to that crowd, you know, there were thousands of people there and I came out and I'm like, when I start doing voices, I don't even know if they realize what I'm doing. I think they might think this is my voice. In the beginning, they were like, is, does he talk? I'm talking like Joe Pesci. Hey, how do you they, <laughs> they had, and I think they were looking at me, that's and then they, they hear what's coming out, and then, oh, oh, that's what he's doing. Yeah. And then they came along, and it was just like... Yeah, the, 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 TS, the TS crowd was very forgiving. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, they actually enjoyed it. They were, they were uh, very they, vocal. They were awesome. They were they, awesome. They, it really was. It was interesting it was to stand on the side of the stage. Well, thank you. It but it was honor. still interesting to see... <laughs> no, no, no. It was yeah, an Mr. honor. Mr. Nero. No, Let me get, no, no. get peace in here, all right? Yeah, yeah. Yo, you're yo, good, yo. You're good. But uh, it, it, the, 
the, the, the audience was very forgiving. I mean, not that they shouldn't be, but I couldn't believe how much they really liked you guys. The fact that it was very different type of music. Yeah, because when I had started it, you know, we knew, I, I knew that I was on to something. I didn't know how long it was going to take to develop. I didn't right. know how long it was going to take for it to take. I had no ideas at the time. And I just knew that we were getting gigs and we were getting great reaction. And that was really in the infancy, the first part, the first year of it really being released and being... A, a, introduced to the public and I gotta say I wasn't sure but I just kept seeing this reaction of people like I've never seen anything like that I've never no, seen this guy it's nothing like, like that there really you know, isn't anything like that there wasn't at the time um, refresh my memory that night that you opened up for Twisted Sister in Starland Ballroom did you have the whole horn section and everything or was it just the rock band at the time we had keyboard a, player no right. we no. actually did at, at the time I we were doing remember. everything on tracks that's right you were playing the tracks we no but you, you had li you had the Kanata brothers oh right? everything was live except yeah. for the the horns the were horns tracks. right but they there was live bass drums and guitar yeah, yeah. everything else was live and we came out and really the it most great. important thing was yeah we came out and did the show and then it, there was a couple of times on that show where the, the tracks kind of did some yeah, weird things that. and we incorporated it into the whole show which was funny but like i said the most important thing was playing with the audience, and what audience is better to play with than a Twisted Sister audience? You yeah. know, because they're either going to throw cans at you or they're going to throw. Or they're going to drag you off the stage. Yeah, drag you off the stage. Yeah, that's that could be a rough crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really then you had seen the evolution crowd. by the time you saw us at Starland, right? And then you saw us a couple of years later right. at Smoke and Owls. Smoke and Owls. And uh, and ever since then, it's been taken off. Like I said, now we're in theaters, and I, and now I'm doing. It's almost like branching off and doing different versions of that show. Now I do a version where I'm just a piano player. Well, I do a trio or a duo where I, me and a piano player. So I play, take that character from the Hitmen and I play with a piano player, and I play Mr. Lounge. I, I know a few people that saw it, and they, th they said it was fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, without a doubt. Saw it fa and fantastic. Paul, I just going to give a plug. Let's go ahead. The, to the Polo Lounge in Westbury Matter, I'm there every Thursday, Thursday night. night. It is the, the most, it's an amazing room. It's, it, it's a true, it's the room I should be in right. when I'm doing just the piano. It's, it's unbelievable. First of all, the food is off the chains. It's amazing. So but the food the takes your mind off the band. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you're my, not that good. My singing and stuff like that, but <laughs> but the you know it, it's just a true supper club environment. Yeah, it's it, like it, the it really way is. It should be. So uh, yeah, so again, that's going to be every Thursday night. I'm there every Thursday night, and I also do a lot of filling. I do some weekend stuff there. I got a show coming up there, May 24th with Sal on a Friday night that we're doing. Another thing that we've developed off of it, which is like a Dean and Jerry show, it's called the uh, Sal and Billy show, Billy and Sal, whatever. Go doing. a little bit into it because I don't think a lot of people know what Dean and Jerry is. I do. It's not ice cream. No, no. <laughs> De Dean and Jerry's ice cream. What flavor are you? You know? No, but it's <laughs> what, cherry, cherry vanilla. No, but it's it. You know, it's kind of like a, a comedy musical thing. It's it's a, an adaptation off of my show. Sal loved the show so much when he used to come and see it. It's an important thing to establish here with everybody who's watching that um, I mentioned and I start out talking about Billy Mir and the Hitmen, but I think that there are different inceptions of that act. And you can see within the course of a few weeks or a month, you could see you in different top, uh, the different styles, different, mm -hmm. different areas of, of, uh, of classic music like that. I got to tell you, it's... It, I think, like I said, when we stumbled upon this, and I had a, a vision for it, it was something like you have an epiphany, and you say... Well, we had I, spoken I, about I, yeah, it when I, you coming up with it. Yeah, I kind of just had a visual. I, you know, I had a dream about it, and I said, you know what, this is like, I see this Vegas-style thing with like standards, but I don't see it just being standards. And you were able to take it and do different versions of it. So like the last show that we did, which was at Governor's, which was Sal and myself, it was the first show we did together, sold out. It was in a real, it was in a comp. They took the whole club and they transformed it into the Copacabana. Really? Light, spotlight. It was, and you it was, guys headlined the we coat had room. dancers. You guys headlined the coat yeah, room. Yeah, we were in the coat room, exactly. It's, it's the best weird place to get the money. <laughs> Especially your rate. Yeah, exactly. You place supposed to go get the money from people. You know, go where the money is. So we did it and um, we set the room like the Copa. We had dancers and we didn't, like I said, you know, we didn't advertise it as these guys from the Howard Stern show and all that stuff. It was strictly, you know, Sal Governale and Billy Mira. 
doing this show and they were turning away people at the end of the night. It was like packed. I mean, the, the room was filled and people that's fantastic. were nuts. So yeah, it's that, that's, that's that fantastic. now, Sal Valentinetti from... <laughs> it was so good because we didn't know... <laughs> <laughs> Sal Valentinetti from America's Got Talent sure. turns out that uh, somebody made a phone call. He turns out he's a huge Stern fan, which we didn't know. Right. And he came over and he did a couple of songs with us that night. So at the end of the night, uh, you know, Sal and I did our routine and everybody's loving it. And then I did a joke because Sal's name is Sal and I was joking. He was like, I'm the real Sal the voice, you know. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden the fans yeah. went nuts he's a, he's because really Sal is. Valentinetti, the sure. real Sal the voice comes. And this guy, you know, and we just we just had an amazing show. So it's, it's you know, it's something that we have special guests. Now I'm starting to take Sal and actually incorporate him as much as I can into my show. So like I got a two hour show coming up. So just, just a segment of him coming out with me. You know, if I have a long show, if it's an, an under 90 minute set, I can do that. But like some of these theater shows, I'll be at Gateway Playhouse on April 5th. And you know, what I'm gonna do is just have Sal come out for a couple, like 10 minutes and we'll do our routine. You know, a little bit of a routine in the show, which will be great, and the fans will love it. So it's a way to interconnect all the shows. You still didn't explain what Dean and Jerry is. Oh, well, it's, you're definitely, not, about, it's definitely not the ice cream, you know. Yeah, you're, Mark's you're talking mind about, is always on the ice cream, the you're, dessert. You're talking about Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Uh, and classic if duo. Anybody, classic duo of guys that... And we... We're not a tribute. I, I always say this. The, the show is not a tribute. I, no, it is not. I, I, I tribute because I do impressions, but I don't tribute. I'm not one of those guys who gets goofy and dresses up as somebody and go out. That's not what we yeah, do. You do just yourself. That's bad enough. But, <laughs> uh, but what we do is we take that style of entertainment, which sure. people are starving for. They really like. But you get out in the audience and you ham it up with them. Yeah. I mean, you it's. You know, I've seen you. As you're singing and telling a story, singing, sitting down with people at a table, and you, you know, you kind of talking to them, and I mean, it was fantastic. The entertainment, like I said, the entertainment value was very high up there on the chart. Yeah, it really we, was. We and and Sal and I, the show that we've been doing together, we really rehearsed a lot of stuff. But you know, the greatest thing about it is, as rehearsed as it is, there's a bunch of it that's ad libbed on stage. So it, it it lends to allow us to you know seasoned comics to. Go go out there and know that if we branch off for a little bit, we can come right back to where we had to go to keep the show moving in the direction that it needed to go to, you know, so it's really been a lot of fun and it's been enlightening to me on so many levels, you know, and, and so much fun. I, I'm just having a blast with, with all the shows. I'm, I'm, my calendar just keeps filling, which is great. So we all have to come out and see the multiple yeah, versions hello. of... Hello, Mark. You know, the food is great. This is where me and Mark stare each other now. <laughs> so we all have to get out and see the dis different inceptions of uh, Billy Mira and some of it Billy Mira and the Hitman, or just you and Sal, or just you and a piano player. Yes. Um, you still have the full band, though. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, what, I what, what, that the music is great, and you can't see that music much anymore anywhere. No, but you know, um, what I, I, I've done since then, which is really going to surprise you since you've seen the project a couple sure. of years ago, um, is I've, I've kind of been incorporating different music now into the show. Mm -hmm. So there's probably swing is this much of the show. If this show is okay. this much, it's going to be this much. Gotcha. I'm actually doing some Latin music. Oh, I'm nice. actually making, I'm writing more bits. The greatest thing that I'm really excited about is this new Billy Joel, Elton John thing that I'm doing, this medley I do in the show. And it's a story about Billy Joel and Elton John looking at each other through music and how they became friends. And it's how they actually, you know, when you, I took the songs, and I, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but if you come see the show. Did you have a dream about this or something? No, it was just, <laughs> I had a dream. Yeah, exactly. Of Billy Joel. And I, I thought about it, you know, because I grew up in the same town as Billy Joel. We didn't grow up far from each other in that, and not that he was living there at the time. And did you know him? No. I did not, and it's so amazing. So you say that? I didn't know, because I'm just saying. I, I was thinking about this. I found out that he didn't live far from me, Mark. 
<laughs> so I said, "What? Are, you know, I'm sure when he was growing up, he was looking at artists the same way that I did, that I was able to meet later on in later years. Uh, people that you, you know, you looked up to, and I'm sure, and I said, you know, it's probably amazing. These guys were probably, the, both of them have such amazing songs. If you listen to probably, in my opinion, and I'm sure people, you know, you know, Long Island musicians, that's a bunch of nonsense, but in my opinion, Two of the some of the greatest artists who who ever lived, Billy Joel and Elton John. When we can go on and on, Stevie Wonder and you know Prince, and we can yeah, talk I about mean it's it's but it's it's countless. It it, really it's is. countless, but but they are two of the greatest that were no two ways that ever lived. And you know, I said, what if it? You know, they were probably trying to outdo each other when they were writing songs. So they were he was listening to, you know, it could, he, could be who Elton knows John really wrote Rocket Man, time. and the next thing you know, Billy Joel writes Piano Man, and the next thing he writes this, and and it's a story about how their relationship developed, and they wind up in a bar having a couple of drinks. So is is this actually going to be a stage play at some? Yeah. Point so or what I do is I start off with the production, start off with the bitches back from um, Elton John, and then I go into this whole medley, and I start. To Telling the story, and it's just me and a piano player. Right. And then the end production, the thing that ends everything off, is Zanzibar, which is great and a <laughs> great tune. And it's such yeah. a jazzy, you know, just a just an awesome. So when you take these songs and you adapt them to the theater, it's amazing what what they what how they come off. Uh, right. There, it's almost like they were born. You know, those they sound perfect in a theater. Right, right. That oh, no, without a doubt. I'm going to ask Steven something really quick. Steven, you don't have to turn your mic on. Could you turn that power strip on over there? On? Yeah, just turn the, the switch on there. I don't mean to do this and break the, the show here for a second, but uh, uh, yeah, I didn't. I should be good. Now I'm good. Excellent. Thank you, Stephen. His whole computer was going to die. Yeah, exactly. And I'm living off this computer here. Let's move on a little bit um, to another part of your career, uh, which was quite amazing because you actually became much more of than just a local phenomenon. You went on to be the voice of the MMA for a few years. Yeah. You well, that moved was, to Vegas. That was. Uh, a they fluke. hired you. And yeah. That was a fluke. Fluke, wacky. <laughs> yeah, but you would. I mean, everybody got to know who you were. I yeah, mean, especially yeah. From that. Uh, out in Las Vegas, right? Let's 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 you start. Know. Let's roll it back for a minute. And um, how did you how did you get that gig? Because that's a huge. That was it a was, massive gig. It was a, a fluke thing. It was they like called something. You? No, they no, do? no, no, no. What happened was we uh, on serious. I'm a big MMA fan, and I, no, of course, you know, at the time I was a big UFC fan, and I thought I knew so much about mixed martial arts. I grew up in a house with martial arts. My father actually taught martial arts. Right. Not mixed martial arts, which it wasn't at the time. You know, this is before everything was like single discipline. So I had grown uh, a liking for the sport. You know, this new evolving, ever so quickly evolving sport sure. that was mixing boxing with wrestling and, you know, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu. And, um, I uh, I went on a show on Sirius that I happened to run into at a UFC fight, somebody from the Sirius Fight Club, which I didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'd come on. They're like, oh, Billy Mira, I know you from the Stern Show. Hey, you can come on anytime you want. How about next week? You know? And I walked in and I thought well, I knew. No, actually, it. Billy, when he was there, he went, well, how about now? I'm <laughs> yeah, 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 let's I'm go. Over you know, already. Hey, let's go, you know? <laughs> so I went uh, onto the show and uh, I had a blast. And I said, you know what? Why don't I come on every week and I'll do like a comedic twist onto some hot topics. And right. Long story short, I wound up leaving and I built my own studio in my house. And at the time, right. I almost went into a little kind of like hiatus for a while from everything uh, when I first bought my house and I didn't want to be bothered. My son was about one at the time and I didn't really want to do anything. I didn't want to travel doing comedy. I just didn't want to do anything. So I built a studio and I, you know, with cameras and, and couches and all the sorts of stuff. The one that was in the garage. The one that was in the yeah, garage. Right, right. I took the whole garage and Sure, it was a great converted. studio. Yeah, it was. It really was. You know, for the time. And I remember... Um, you know, I, I started doing a comedy show, which would my friend, my buddy Larry, who was on the Brewer Show. The Brewer Show. And uh, you know, we did that for about six months, and it was a lot of fun. You know, we had a good time doing it. And some guys moved away and did this. And then I'm like, I got this whole studio, and it was a fluke thing. The guy calls me up from Sirius and says, Look, you know, uh, I'm leaving Sirius. I want a show to do. I said, You know what? Why don't we do it here at my place? Right. This MMA show. Well, let's let's try it out. And at the time, UStream was a thing. UStream was. The thing, you, at the, time. You, the thing at the time. So I said, well, go on a, a network and we'll just have a good time with it. Well, long story short, 
From that, we started breaking because we started having all of these fighters on in my little garage in Merrick. <laughs> and we literally started breaking all of these stories that were picked up by all the major news sites. Sure. And everybody was there, like, who are these guys? <laughs> yeah. Where are these stories coming? Hey, wait, I'm in front of Fox. You know, and it was crazy. And uh, we did it every, literally every week. There was another big story that was coming out until eventually we got contacted by some people, flew out to Las Vegas. I'm giving you the abbreviated yeah, version. Of course. No, I, I heard the yeah, yeah, we flew out to Las disgusting. Vegas, and uh, I remember you were you were you had uh, called me and said before you actually made the commitment. I remember you we met. And we were having a cup of coffee, and you were going, I'm not sure whether I should do this or not, and I don't know, I'll have to leave my family for a while. I did. I have to I move was, yeah, yeah, to Vegas that, yeah. at least temporarily for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you were, you were really apprehensive about doing the whole thing. I because, was. Because, only because you had to move away from your family, because you couldn't take them with you. Yeah, that was the toughest thing, you know, because my yeah, son of at course. the time. Your, so time was, your son was, was only about one years old, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, he was about three at the three, time. Oh, three three, years three old, or four okay. years old at the time. All right. And he was like, you know, so, and I remember, you know, my wife was kind of like, you know, I want to come out. I'm like, listen, I'm telling you, I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah. Because I don't know how long this is going to last. And so, and I, you know, but I figured, well, if it lasts six months, that's a good thing. Let's see. Sure. Because these shows, they come and go. They come and go. They come and go. So I said, you know, in six months, it lasted more than that. And then we went to Fox 5 and we had, there was an evolution at one point, And then it was, you know, that was it. It just, after almost two years, it, it ended for me. They just, you know, that was it. There was, a, did, did, like, once again, it was evolving and going into different directions. Yeah, but it exploded for you. I mean, put your yeah, name it, in places no, it, that it, it, you it, hadn't it, been so far, yeah, even yeah, with the yeah, Stern yeah. Show. It was great, but i got to tell you, as much as I was doing that in Vegas, which was great for being in Vegas, a lot of people, you know, it really wasn't nationally something, but, you know, a lot of people in Vegas knew, because at that point I was localized. I wasn't really going national. We were still breaking right, stories, but, but the, it was... The, the, the stories I got were, you know, how many people we know or don't know, but people would be in Vegas, and everybody, when you're there... Everybody uh, would come. Everybody, so many people would, everybody would, would pay come attention yeah. to the fights, and then also heard your name and your voice on the show. Yeah. It was tremendous, because it filtered down in a lot of places. Yeah, but you know what the crazy thing is? You know, it's still even being there. A lot of people knew me mm -hmm. from the Stern Show. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, there were yeah. times I would be like, I thought you, know, oh, you know, hey, what's happening? Hey, you're, uh, yeah. And I'd be like, you know, like I'm like, I forget, I forget, I was on that show for so many years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I met some great that. people though, and I, all my friends in Vegas. I, um, you know, I'll, I'll so hope to be out soon. The uh, so I, I want to say I think you were basically out there. I hadn't. We talked often. You know, all you the called, time. I mean, yeah, you called in all the time asking because I would you know, ask you for I advice and yeah. should I do that? I mean, we discussed about some of the decisions, but uh, I think it went on for about two years, right? Yeah, yeah, almost two, two years. years, almost two years, and yeah. then uh, that was it. And then I came yeah, back then and the contract <laughs> ended. You came back. Yeah, that was it. It was you like started. you know, and <laughs> contracts don't end; they end. Yeah, right. they end. Contracts, contracts don't, don't end. end; they, they end. end. <laughs> you know, and I was. Was like, look, you, you know, you're not paying me this anymore. I'm out of here. See you later. And trust me, that was a very, very hard thing to leave. It was. Um, yeah, I had course. developed after almost two years so many, you know, friends and people that I knew. It was like, boom, I was like switching gears. The MMA alone is just a tremendous sport. It was a great thing. You know yeah. what? Everything happens for a reason because that was where I had started to dabble back in music again. That's when I was out in, in Las Vegas and I met Jakey e. Lee and we started to become friends and I started right. singing again and then I, I came up with the ideas for a show and I would you know the I was really influenced by all of the casinos, casinos. and, and sure. the glitz and the glamour and everything and I always one thing I can you know I'm your gut tells you a lot your heart tells you a lot right. and I remember saying I'm not supposed to be doing this out here not you know this MMA thing is fun and you know but I got it wasn't in my heart to do it I knew that I was going to be eventually coming back to what I was supposed to be doing, which was stand up singing, and I did a couple of appearances. And right. you know, I remember I started doing some stuff in uh, comedy clubs up in Planet Hollywood, and and I remember my buddy was like, "You got to get on stage again. You have to get on stage again." My buddy Todd Rex, who's an amazing comedian, he travels with Craig Robinson. He's got oh, his okay. special coming out. Sure. He um, 
he's, he's great. And if, we became very close friends. And uh, slowly, you know, I realized, you know, I went to the comedy clubs and the guys knew me there. And I was like, wow, these guys are, oh, yeah, we're big fans of what you did. And, you know, with, right. the, you know, with the comedy stuff. And we used to listen to you on Stern all the time. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be coming back to this eventually. This this was a nice little thing to do for a while. A little sidetracked. A little sidetracked, but I'm coming back to entertainment. The um, <laughs> Let's go back to a little little bit here. Uh, back on Valentine's Day, Yes. I see you and Sal <clears throat> became lovers. You did <laughs> something called... For lovers only. For lovers only. The, the two of you were lovers. Yeah. You were well, sa- I don't. See, you, I see, but not Sal. Yeah. It was. Uh, <laughs> uh, and some people would disagree on that. Yeah, you think so, huh? That. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, you know, we did. That was the adaptation off of my show, and you know, Sal came up with the great idea of calling it for lovers only, and uh, that's when we premiered it, and it was great. That was on Valentine's Day, which was February fourth. And it was at the... Uh, and everybody was like, you know, it's going to be hard to fill a club on Valentine's Day. And you Day sold it out. Sold it out. They were turning away people at the door. It was at the... the uh, it, was at, uh, it was at Governor's. Governor's. Governor's in okay. Levittown. Governor's. Uh, you know, great comedy club. Right. And uh, they're awesome. So, we, yeah, we had, we had an amazing... Everything uh, and then some came out. Uh, it, was, it was just a lot of fun. Let's uh, and we're going to do it again, by the way, May twenty fourth. All right, let's cover something real quick. You know, we're getting close to the end. Um, I had my own radio show a while back, quite a few years back in the early two thousands. Animal, uh, Animal Tactics. Tactics, of course, which we're going to bring back again on this network. Yes, that's a great thing, man. Exactly. Is Aussie. Uh, <laughs> Billy was a guest on Animal Tactics many times. The most there were some show. legendary shows where we all walked out. It was so funny that we were all crying at the yeah, end. I yeah. mean, just so funny. Um, of course, in those days, you really didn't have cameras on in radio shows. Um, you know, these days, it really is television rather than radio. Right, because right. Because there's cameras. Uh, but we had some legendary shows with you on. And um, one in particular that stands out, and I'm trying to get a copy of it. Um, my good friend and bandmate, D. Snyder, was on. He was on a few times with me. But he came on, and you were also invited on also, right? That same night. The same yeah. night to come on just as another guest. So Billy shows up in the studio. D's on with me, and it's already a funny show. You know, D is also a very funny guy. Yeah, he, he is. He got a great and delivery. Um, and uh, he always helped me out, you know, by coming on the show. It was always great. We, I mean, we had a ball doing it uh, together there on the show. And Billy walks in, and somehow it immediately morphs into you, a character you doing David Lee Roth. And you and D went at it for an hour. Well, it, it, mm-hmm. was, it was. We even cut out the commercials. Yeah. You were on such a roll. I was almost a referee. Yeah, yeah. What happened was, um, I started volleying with with D. Of course, you know, and D's an easy guy to volley with. Oh yeah, he he can go. But I, what I would do is, and and you know, there were no cameras in those days, so I would I went in front of the microphone and I played actually different. Ca- One of the characters I stuck with was David Lee Roth. Yes. But I started doing different characters. You did. Talking you, you did come to, in and out of characters. And then I started, you know, throwing. And zingers at Z at D, at D. and well, you know we just it was just like one of those things. And then I started asking him these outlandish questions, and you know D he had answers to this outlandish stuff that I was this throwing at him, and we were I was cracking up. I'm like I was only kidding, you know. But he was yeah, like, uh, yeah, you know, it's funny you said that. You D know? is not a guy that you're going to stump. <laughs> Anybody is going to stump. I mean, yeah. he, he's uh, fast, you know, fast with the tongue, yeah. fast with the mouth. There's no two ways about it, and you're not going to get him. But yeah. he also when he's in that mode. He's killer. And you were in the mode too. We were and both we were both like I want to say it probably I remember I'm thinking back now, I remember we skipped two commercial breaks and the top of the hour. So it probably went on for close to forty five minutes. Oh, easily. Easily. And easily. nonstop. You guys yeah, kept like, kid, like just, it was just like just kept going. And I was but, hitting him with characters and just as <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean the David Lee Roth stuff was great, and he was going at you. Oh, it was it was fantastic. You know, it's amazing. And did you hear something from Dave about that? 
I don't remember about. I, I remember somebody days, making so. a comment that Dave Dave said something because you know David Lee Roth. Yeah, well, yeah, he, he yeah. knows of me. He knows David of Lee. you. Yeah, Sammy he certainly Hagar, did after right? that. Right? Actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, I you know he used to bring me up because there was a couple of years there that I drove Dave crazy. You know, oh, well, and yeah, he right followed too. me. He was like, "Who's this guy, Billy?" <laughs> but it was that was the most intense thing, probably. You know, to get to know. I mean, David Lee Roth is on these major shows and he's saying my name, which was right. like you know, it was crazy. Yeah, that was absolutely crazy. But I, I know that they at one point were referencing some stuff and I think D's name came out and I think that somebody had heard it and I think somehow made its way where they, they put the connection to David Lee Roth and, so and David, Dave Schneider. So David, how did the last Van Halen tour go? Last Van Halen tour? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, forget. I don't remember the last Van Halen tour, you know. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, yeah, I could do that for a long time. Speaking about Van Halen, you know, there's a new tour coming up. Yeah, Michael Anthony's back in the band. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did. I heard. Yeah, no, it's good. And that's great. It's uh, yeah, nice to see the actual original I got, band. I got to tell you, just a little shout out to the band. It's about time that uh, Michael Anthony, if you're going to call it a, a reunion tour. Right. If you're going to call it Van Halen. So you're going to call it Van Halen. Even though Halen. it's not his last name, he was still original Van Halen. Exactly. And uh, he exactly. was part of the sound of that band. Yeah. A yeah, big yeah. part of the sound of that band. Another thing, you know, was great because, you know, like I said, so many rock like, like yourself, people who have done things in the industry. Right, of course. You know, I was honored to be. Uh, Sammy Hagar had a radio show where right. he did uh, Sammy Hagar and Friends right, of course. with Michael Anthony. Yes. And I did his radio show with him. Oh, that's it was, great. I was so, yeah, it's well, just, you it's know, just, I, I, sitting here as, as a guy in a big band, you know, Twisted yeah, yeah, Sister, yeah. Um, I'm also still a fan. And Van Halen is one of my favorite bands. You know, We've talked I mean, about that. I saw them when they were a band called Mammoth. <laughs> Mammoth. I'm sorry, not Mammoth, New Jersey, but Mammoth. <laughs> Mammoth. Mammoth um, in the Whiskey A Go Go in L.A. Yeah, you've told me that story. Yeah, That's yeah, amazing. I wish amazing I could have story. seen that. What What a great time to walk in and see this band, who I had no idea where they were on stage, and my jaw dropped. Here, I mean, at the time. It was so. There was nothing happening in the rock world. There was really nothing. I mean, we did have Kiss and we had some other, you know, big bands, but there was nothing happening as Guitar Hero and and you know you had a you had a, you had a bit of Randy Rhodes going on in certain things, but this was just new and fresh. And you get up there and you see this lead singer doing all this stuff going on and the acrobatics and the kicks and the punches and singing the way he sang and a band that played that well. I mean, you, of course you got Eddie. Van Halen, but nobody gives Michael Anthony any credit. But guy's incredible. Well, you got the, not yeah, only is he an amazing bass player, player, but he's an incredible singer. Singer, yeah, right, I right. Mean, it was the a sound. lot of people don't realize that they were the perfect storm. They were the perfect oh, chemistry of great, two great background band. vocals because you had Eddie Van Halen singing the third, you had Michael Anthony singing the fifth, right? You had Alex Van Halen and his unique cactus style because right. right. the be, double bass drums. You know, Mark is always the showing hot, me. You know, hot, you want to see where we got teachers. a lot of these hot for teacher yeah. stuff. Hot for teachers really. Uh, I mean, parchment who, farm. Yeah. Who listens to Cactus? You, no, uh, me. <laughs> you know what's funny? I saw a documentary once and I almost threw up laughing. Was the the guys in uh, Anvil? Oh yeah. And we're talking about, and he was talking about the drum, and he goes, "Who listens to Cactus?" And right. I started laughing. And I said, "Mark Mendoza does." Yeah. Well, Cactus was a Long Island band, yeah. but they're actually you know semi-famous at the time, especially. <laughs> you know, it was a result of uh, what happened after Vanilla Peace. Fudge. Carmine App, see, yeah. Um, yeah, and Timmy Bogert from yeah. the Vanilla Fudge. Timmy Broke was a bass player. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, phenomenal musicians. And it wasn't too long ago; it was only about a year and a half ago. I was with uh, Carmine, and we were discussing that. And he doesn't want to take, you know, the acclaim to fame for developing that in rock drums. I don't think anybody played like that—a double bass thing, right? The syncopated double bass. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing to hear that. The first time. I mean, I was a fanatic of music always, but that's the first time I ever heard it like that was when they did the rendition of the old Delta Blues song, Parchment Farm. And that is exactly what Half a Teacher was. Half a Teacher is a different uh, song guitar-wise and, and vocally and stuff, but just the same feel. Right, right, you know, right. Which was amazing, an amazing feel that they, they actually dragged out of it. Tough to play, tough to keep up. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Great yeah, that was amazing, though, to, to hear that comparison. We are... Close to running out of time, so I just want to talk to Ozzy for a minute. But, but, but you can ask me anything you want, man. Ozzy, what are you doing now? Are you but, retired? But, but, I've been sick. sick I've had like what? A, I had a pneumonia. I did. No, I, did, I, I snorted ammonia. <laughs> a lot of people got that wrong. They think I've got pneumonia. I snorted ammonia. <laughs> it's just to get away from showering. 
takes me away from Sharon. Anything, you know, them. it's crazy. So that's it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> How much time we got left? B- How much time we got, we got, got left? Two minutes. <laughs> Billy is an incredible impressionist. Does an amazing amount of people. You don't even got to say anything about Robert De Niro. You just got to look like him. That's all you got, though. What do you want from me? What do you want? <laughs> It, it, it's fantastic. Um, you know, hanging around with you is a lot of fun. We've, we've done a lot of that. Um, you, Rob Rush, and I had a radio show together, but we, we still hang around once in a while. We go out, have a couple of drinks, or uh, have dinner together, and it's nothing but laughter. It really is. Oh, yeah. That could be a stage and ball show. Bre- and ball breaking. Yeah, ball course, breaking, naturally. of course. That's me. Yeah. Ball breaking, though. Um, I want to say, before we run out of time, which is just about coming up, that in the next... I don't know, month or so, I'm going to have you on because we could do another hour and tell so many more stories and some great stuff oh, yeah. things that went on and oh, yeah. cover some more of your career. I'm uh, here, Moe's here. Do so. so, all right, real quickly, give us some um, where everybody can find you. Give us a website, give us a I Facebook page and things like that. I always say the best place to find me is uh, on Facebook, and that's Billy Miri, Billy M-I-R-A, or Billy Mira and the Hitman. Go hit like, and you'll find out all the dates where I'm playing. Well, you go to Billy Mira and the Hitman. Dot com, but I like the Facebook stuff. Billy Facebook had also me, had also asked me to play bass in Billy Mirror and the Hitman. You know what my answer to him was? Go f yourself. No, a little <laughs> bit nicer than that. I say, I'm not expensive. I'm priceless. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing on time, Stephen? We're about ready to wrap it up. Billy, you come on again with me soon? Absolutely. You know, we'll, we'll continue Anytime. some of the stories, Anytime. and uh, maybe I'll even get some of the D. Snyder thing and be able to play if it. If you, you can know, find that, that yeah, would be yeah, great I'll, to I, you know, I wish D. doesn't live on Long Island anymore. I wish I could get him on at the same time. Uh, I'm sure he would. You know, we're still very good friends, and we, uh, we, we speak occasionally, or more than occasionally, actually. Right. But uh, uh, it'd be great to have him on at the same time as you. And let's do round two. Bing, bang, bang. Round two. Ding, ding, ding. I am Mark Mendoza. This is Billy Mira. The show is 22 now. The network is Area 22 Productions. Tune in next week at the same time for my next special guest. Soon we'll be back with Billy Mira. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good evening.